This is a Spotify car thing. And I know what you're thinking. That doesn't look like the car thing. And you're right, because this over here is the car thing you're familiar with. What I have in my hands is a prototype, and it took the post office losing two of these to finally get one. This prototype gives us a glimpse into what could have been. We've talked about the Spotify car thing in the past and how it's already open source and that Spotify plans to kill it. But this is a different device. Before this car thing, Spotify sent out test hardware to a few subscribers to figure out what should go in a car thing. What they sent was very different than this final product. You'll see that right away in just how this looks. This one is thicker, the screen is smaller and embedded in the dial, and it has an auxiliary jack. But the differences don't end there. While the fully released car thing ran a glorified web page that pulled in data and needed your phone to work, the original, let's just call it the prototype from here on out, ran on Android and didn't need a phone at all to work. Instead, it had an eSIM to give it a network connection. That means you could connect it to your car either over Bluetooth or an auxiliary jack, which is another feature the release product didn't have, and then scroll through your songs or your playlists. It even does have a little Hey Spotify voice assistant and the option to help with your phone calls. But unlike this final product, the prototype doesn't have a touchscreen, and like I said, it's quite a bit thicker. That's probably to make room for the hardware. Take this apart and you'll find a Qualcomm MSM8909 processor, 16 gigabytes of eMMC storage, and eight gigabytes of RAM, which is good enough to run Android. And that's what is on this device. Although I can't tell you what version of Android, something older most likely. That's because this device is heavily locked down. You can get to the recovery mode by pressing the first preset button while turning it on, but it doesn't actually fit the screen. Fast boot is disabled, communication is encrypted. It's, it's really locked down. It's almost sad we can't get more out of what's on this device. And it'd also be sad not to subscribe to this channel. I have a lot of great tech news and reviews coming, including this guy right here, a DIY Spotify e-ink desk thing you can build yourself, and I'll show you how. It's also worth mentioning that videos like this aren't cheap or easy. In fact, this is my third attempt to take a look at the Spotify car thing prototype. A wonderful viewer tried to send me two, and the post office lost both of them. I had to buy this one from eBay, and I'm planning to send it to that viewer as a small token of apology. But all that costs money, so if you can spare it, a super thanks or a membership would be appreciated, and if not, subscribe to the channel. So what can we do with the Spotify prototype? Not much. I can get it connected to my Wi-Fi through a secret menu, but then when it offers to pair, that process never works. I suspect it has to be connected to a mobile network and the eSIM is disabled. That's an onboard chip and it might theoretically be possible to remove and replace it, but that'd be difficult. So there's no hacking happening with this device. But it's super interesting to see what might have been. The auxiliary jack on this thing is actually pretty spectacular. You can hear setup commands when you plug in headphones and they sound crystal clear. When this prototype worked, it was a standalone device. You can connect to your car and bring Spotify to that vehicle. You wouldn't drain your phone's battery and it was super easy to set up. As long as your car had an aux jack or Bluetooth, this thing worked. It had its own internet, which is great for older cars that don't support Spotify. But alas, Spotify went a different direction and then discontinued this final product too. And soon it will be gone forever. But if you have a Spotify car thing of any kind, don't throw it away, not yet. There's a community called Car Hacks that's done a great job of breathing new life into existing car things. I'll link it below. With them, you can even turn it into a little desk thing that displays weather, music, and more. Check it out. And if that's too much work for you, you can always send yours to me. I'll make sure something's done with them that's good. The address is below in the description along with the link to the Car Hacks community. That's it for now, but if I missed anything you have any questions about, leave a comment below and I'll try and get back to you on that. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this where I take a deep dive into prototype hardware or reviews in general and tech news. Until next time, bye!